the word of God for advancement. Hallelujah. I see you advance in Jesus' name. I hear the Holy Ghost say, it is time for my people to laugh at the face of the enemy. Hallelujah. Because something is about to break open in your life. The day for rain has come. And like mighty showers, our lives are being flooded. restoration come to you grace is given to you at this hour hallelujah you are rising the strength of God in the ability of God and in the grace of God hallelujah it's such a joy again to be in your homes wherever you are all over the world right here right at this moment God's servant, Reverend Dr. Efe Oboke is bringing God's word to you and the amazing Numa Praise is going to be leading us in the time of worship again. If you're excited to be alive at this moment, can you celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah! Wow! Wow! It doesn't matter what the enemy is throwing at you. I like you to know that when you are connected with the divine power of God, your lives will ever soar for the heights of glory. Hallelujah. You know something, friends? Something I found out about life is that decisions are necessary for you to make the right movement in life hallelujah if you must move from one level to another then decisions need to be made in your life actions are always dependent on how you have decided to move and you know what for there to be decisions you must have right judgment judgment is key and that is why in this series of messages coming from God's choice servant we will continue on the subject assessing the power of judgment hallelujah i know that if you can judge correctly that situation you are in right now victory is sure for you hallelujah and so this moment i want you to search into your heart and just say to the lord father i am here i want to hear from you and i want to make the right decisions that will move me into that next level of life bow your heads and talk to the lord at this moment because his power is here his word is here and where the word of the lord is there is always that element of freedom father we thank you we give you praise we surrender all to you as we listen to your word and engage in this moment of worship with all the people connecting this moment all over the world we ask that your power will be full and will attend to every single person in the name of Jesus we thank you father we give you praise in Jesus mighty name we pray if you're happy can you once again celebrate Jesus as we receive the numerous praise for that moment of worship hallelujah Praise God. Would you rise up on your feet? Hallelujah. The place of worship is the place of encounter. It's not an ordinary place. The Bible instructs us to come boldly, to find, to obtain mercy, and to find grace. So as we've come today, just say, Lord God, I surrender. I'm ready to be touched by you. I come longing, I come hungry, because I know there is no me without you. So go ahead and just talk to him. Say, I come this morning in faith, lifting up holy hands to you, just to worship you, to declare my love and my surrender to you, that you are all in all, you are all in all for my life. Hallelujah, we worship you, Jesus. You are the air I breathe. You are my life, you are my song. Hey, hallelujah. Hey. This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Your holy presence Living in me
disciples that they must receive the Holy Spirit. He said that because he meant for every believer to have a supernatural life. With the presence of the Holy Ghost, that supernatural life is possible. And this is why the School of the Spirit that we organize is a training ground for everyone to know how to function in the Spirit. I want to invite you because once more, we're having the School of the Spirit program come up again. It's going to be June 27th all the way to July 8th this year, 2022. I'd like to invite you to be part of that school. You can find out more about this and register. If you go online, go to our Facebook page and see a date with destiny gpc if you go there you'll find the link that will enable you register so i hope to see you this year school of the spirit it is time to experience the glory of god hallelujah what a joy to be back here again and uh, today we're going to continue from last week when we um, began to look at accessing the power of judgment. I shared last week that um, our world is under the invasion of a lawless spirit. John chapter 10 verse 10 clearly states it. Jesus says the thief has come to steal, to kill and to destroy. In verse 1 he said that that thief has entered the sheepfold or this earth. I established that the sheepfold simply means where the sheep are kept. And we being sheep Bible metaphorically is talking about this earth. So there's an invasion. And everywhere you see the activities of that thief, that robber. But thank God that Jesus has made it clear that he has come to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. So where you see pain, there's more abundance of life there if you know how to get into it. And part of God's means of bringing us into life is through the judicial power. So that is why we are talking about accessing judicial power, the power of judgment. It is critical that we master this. So let's go back to our text again in Isaiah chapter 59. And let's begin to look at uh, the ideas we have for today. Well, in Isaiah 59 verse 4, Bible begins to speak and reveals to us the heart of God. And in that place it says that none call it for justice. Remember that it is not known desires justice. People are groaning, they are in pain, they are wondering when help will come. So people desire justice. But justice does not come because you desire it. It doesn't come because you are groaning. Somebody say, oh, I've been in this for so long, when will God help me? God does not help you because you have been in for very long. It's not longevity of a problem that attracts heaven's attention. So that's why we need to understand scriptures. Bible says that none call it for justice. So justice comes because somebody is empowered and understands the technology of calling and calling for justice. So none calls for justice and none pleaded for truth. Truth is only established when somebody knows how to plead for it. So God begins to make an assessment of the situation and says none is calling for justice. Nobody is pleading for truth. And people are beginning to rely on vanity. Things that have no life. Things that cannot help. Men are seeking help in wrong places. And following wrong things. And because of that you see a lot of delusion. You see a lot of people being misled. And deception taking place. So God is concerned about these things. They speak lies. They conceive mischief. And all they bring forth at the end of the day is iniquity. Now as we go on to verse 9 of that text. He continues again by speaking and telling us here he says therefore is judgment far from us this is not what god wants but this is the reality why is judgment far why are people dying of cancer why are people dying in accidents why is there so much failure so much pain drug addiction collapsing marriages children that are into dope all manner of things going on why is this why is judgment far it is supposed to be near. Jesus already died. Why is judgment still far from us? He himself declared on the cross that it is finished. Amazing three words that Jesus spoke. He said it is finished. Everything to be done has been done. His blood has been shed. Everything that God needs 
to accept his sacrifice has been put in place. Yet this is the conclusion that judgment is far from us. Neither does justice overtake us. We are waiting for light. Behold, obscurity is the outcome. We are looking for brightness, but we end up walking in darkness. How can we deal with these things? People of God, we need to learn that like in any country, it is the judiciary that is set up to deal with injustice and to deal with disobedience. It doesn't matter how aggrieved you are, whatever your neighbor has done, justice does not come to you because you hate your neighbor or you know that what was done was wrong. You need to get to the court. The court is the system empowered to give you justice. And that's what God is talking about here. In fact, if we go on and read verse 16, he starts by saying that he looked and he saw that there was no man. It would take a man who becomes a judge to deal with this. So it is important. He says here, he saw that there was no man. Now there were men, but there was no man. There was no judge man. There was no man who was a judge with the capacity to call, with the capacity to call, to, to, to plead for truth. Nobody was there. Now, as we wonder, what kind of a man is this that God is looking for? Not just an ordinary man. That verse continues by saying that he wondered that there was no intercessor. So the kind of man that God is talking about here is an intercessor. Not just an ordinary man. There were men. Men that were in pain, groaning, walking in injustice. But the kind of man that will make a difference, God describes him here. He says he wonders that there's no intercessor. So if you must be a judge, one of the things you must learn about is that you must be an intercessor. An intercessor is, the, is part of the trapping of a judge. He wonders there's no intercessor. And without one, there will always be, an, always be injustice. The word intercessor here is actually better translated intervener. Somebody who intervenes in a situation. There needs to be a man like that. Do you possess the will to intervene? Are you ready to intervene? Are you that person that wants to make a difference? That's the first requirement. It takes intercessors to bring a bad change. Now let's go back and um, pick our example from the first man. Babu says that Jesus is the first begotten from the dead. So he's our example. He's the first of our order. We belong to the order of Melchizedek. Jesus is the first in that order. Let's go back there and let's see this kind of person. Because God is wondering that there's no intercessor. What does that mean? Let's go back to Jesus here. Now, if we go to the book of Hebrews chapter 7 and see one verse, verse 25. Look at what it says about him. He says, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost. What does that mean? It means that when a man comes to him, it doesn't matter how far gone that man is. He has the capacity to save that man. How is he able to do that? Bible says, wherefore, he's able also to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him. How? Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. There's a power in intercession that breaks every hold. He's able to deliver any man completely to the uttermost, no matter how far gone he is, because the power of intercession. And that's why God wonders, how come there's no man who's an intercessor? In fact, let's see that text from the book of, of um, from the NIV translation, you know, that it renders it a bit differently, but it will help us appreciate what that verse is saying. Now look at it, it says this, therefore, he's able to save completely, 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 he says, those who come to God through him, because this is the reason he always lives to intercede for them. Intercessors are judges that God has placed to bring about change, to execute change. And Jesus today is effective because he occupies that office. He's the supreme judge of the universe. And one way he does that is through intercession. Now, um, I want us to see um, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 1, because uh, uh, we're talking about a man intercessor. 
I want to show you something about that. Now, Bible says in this text, it said in verse 1, Jeremiah 15, it said, then said the Lord unto me. Something is going on here. He's speaking with Jeremiah. And look at what God says. He says, though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be towards these people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Jeremiah has come. He's talking to God about a people in a situation. And God looks at him and says, look, 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 look. This thing you are saying, you are coming here to discuss. Even if Moses and Samuel come before me, I'm not going to listen to them. Now, what I'm going to bring out here is this. Moses and Samuel are long gone, dead for centuries. Long gone. But God remembers them. And God remembers them because of their persuasive abilities. In other words, whenever Moses stood before him or Samuel stood before him, they had the skill of being in his court in such a manner that they're able to bring many people into justice. I'm letting you know that being a judge requires skill. It's not just opening your mouth to pray. There's skill involved that you must learn. Clearly, Moses and Samuel were outstanding because much, many years after they were gone, God is still referring to them. That when they come before me in my court, I know what they do there. May you be that skilled intercessor, one that is able to bring about justice and plead for truth and make truth happen in the lives of people. Oh my God, I bless God for that. Now let's go to a text, Isaiah 43, as we look at accessing the power of judgment. I want to look at Isaiah 43, one verse, verse 26. Now it says in that place, it says, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Remember we read in Isaiah 59, where he says that none pleaded for truth. For truth to prevail in our lives, for truth to stand in our affairs, somebody must plead for it. Now he's saying here, he said, put me in remembrance, let us plead together. In other words, you come with your persuasive words into my court. Declare thou so that you may be justified. This is the process of obtaining justice. There's a pleading that must go on. And he says, you must come to declare. What are you declaring? How are you pleading? These are the ingredients that must be in a person of skill who wants to function as a true judge. He's talking about you getting justice. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that you may be justified. Justice is possible. We can see truth stand. But he says, you must come before his court. You must plead. You must know how to plead. And you must know how to call. All these are vital ingredients that a judge must learn. Remember what I said? That skill is involved in functioning as a judge. Now, there are three factors that basically we have to be there for you to be an effective judge. Number one, you must be a willing vessel. Truth is this. When we look at the kingdom, Functioning as a judge requires a lot of sacrifice. And so there's more the willingness and readiness to occupy that position. Many people don't like to be bothered or troubled. You can never be a judge like that. If you are that person who doesn't have compassion, you will never be an effective judge. So the first requirement is that you must be willing. Willing for what? Willing to pay the price, whatever the price is. You must be ready. That prayer that says, Lord, whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, anything you require of me, I'm ready for it. That must be the constant prayer of a judge. Jesus prayed that prayer. He said, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. You must have that as your prayer and desire. God, whatever you require of me, don't give God conditions. Too many of us give God conditions to serve him. No, to be a judge, you must be surrendered to God and be willing to pay the price. So that is important. And number two, every judge must be prepared. Even in our normal, natural, legal system. You can't just wake up and become a judge. You must go through school, law school. You must be trained for it. So there's a preparation that must go before you become a judge. So, willingness to pay the price. Two, preparation. All of these are components of being a willing vessel. And number three, you must be compassionate. 
If there's no compassion in your heart, you will never be an effective judge. You must carry the pains of people ready to be used by God to bring about change in their lives. Like I said, the word intercessor means an intervener. Somebody's ready to step into the gap, into that place, that void, that gap that is making people live in pain. That must be the willingness that you command. So the first requirement of a judge is willingness to be a vessel that God can pour himself through. Willingness in paying the price, willingness in being prepared properly, and willingness in being compassionate. These are vital ingredients and they make up number one. Now let's see um, that text again. Isaiah 43 verse 26. I'm going to show you number two. There it says, put me in remembrance. What is he talking about here? That when you come to the court, he says, and you are looking for justice, one of the things that you need to know how to do is put him in remembrance. Now, you cannot bring about remembrance if the matter was not previously stated. You only remember something that happened before. If it's a new thing you are coming with, then you, it's not an act of remembrance. Remembrance is a recollection. You are going back to the past and you are pulling something of there into today's reality. That's what remembrance is. So when God says here that when you come looking for justice, number one, put him in remembrance and then now begin to plead with him. What is he talking about? The basis of your visit to his court is his word. When he says, put me in remembrance, he's talking about you bringing his word back to him. Many come to God empty. They don't come with scriptures. They don't come with what God has spoken. They come with their emotions. They come with their desires. That is not the basis. Bible says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you will ask and then you will get. The basis of our pleading is his word. So he says here, yeah, put me in remembrance. So an active intercessor is a person that knows the word of God and is able to come before God and say, God, this is what your word says. Don't come based on your emotions. Come based on his word and present his word to God again and say, God, this is what your word says. Like Daniel, Bible says that he discovered by the books something God spoke. And based on that, he went on a 21-day fast. And God opened the heavens and brought his blessing. So, put me in remembrance is a major key. And it's a key of bringing his word to his court. If you want to get justice, that is the basis on which you are going to plead your case. Even in our natural courts, lawyers have to make their cases. I maintain the side cases that have been done in the past. It's not that the judge does not know those cases. The judge knows them. But the lawyer needs to come up with the cases to make his case. It's, it's amazing. Because all these cases we're talking about, a lot of the judges already know about them. But when the lawyer comes before his court, he comes citing those cases to make a case for his client. So the same way, Babu says that, put me in remembrance and let us plead together. Declare thou and you may be justified. So this is a critical ingredient in being an effective judge if you want to obtain justice. Now let's see another text again. We're looking at three um, important principles that govern effective and purposeful um, um, establishment of justice as we come before the courts of God. Now in the book of Romans chapter 8, look at verse 26. It says here, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. Now look at this. It says, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. Remember that in the book of Isaiah 59, what did God wonder at? What was God looking for? The Bible says he's looking for a man. What kind of a man? We see in that text, he's looking for an intercessor. So the person God needs is an intercessor. But in this text, we are being shown something about being in that, in that place of intercession. He says, even though you have decided to be an intercessor, the truth is that you do not know how to pray as you should. You can't get result relying on your natural abilities. You need more than that. So we are told here 
that the Spirit will help our infirmities. Because we do not know how to pray as we should. But what will he do? He says, the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. So we step into the place of intercessors and then we hook onto his spirit and let him take over. We must understand how to function by the spirit if we're going to have successful intercession. And thank God he says here that the spirit himself will make intercession for us and will help us with groanings which cannot be altered. The Holy Ghost takes over and helps you to express accurately your desires before the court of God. This is how we obtain justice. This is how we command freedom. This is how we make things happen. God is looking for men that understand the spirit. Men who know how to stay with the Holy Ghost and can speak by the spirit of God. Our world needs us. He needs us. Many people are lost. They are wondering when next help will come. But you are the person God is looking at to bring about the change. Why don't you yield yourself as a vessel? Why don't you come to his word and say, God, what have you really said? And stay in the spirit, praying in the spirit, and align the Holy Ghost, use you as a vessel to pray through and to establish the word of God. People of God, our season has come to be effective judges. We must access that dimension of judicial power. We must know how to access the power of judgment. And being an intercessor is a vital key. You must learn it, become skilled in it like Moses and like Samuel. And our world is depending on it. Your family is counting on you. I trust God that we're going to um, step up and take our place. Now let me say this. Uh, when you have a matter in court, you don't decide the day the matter will end. It is the process. Even the judge does not know when a matter will be concluded. Because it is how the case is going that determines when it will be concluded. So when you are praying, stand on the word of God. Don't fix a date and say, if by this date nothing has happened, then no more. No. That is not how to be a good judge. Your own is to do your bit and allow the process of God's help by spirit, his word to mature and take over and become established. That is the way God expects us to truly function. What you can only do is aid the process. How do you do that? Bring accessories. What does that mean? Fasting. As you are praying, you can add fasting. You can call a brother or a sister to join you in praying because there's power in agreement. So you can add accessories to the process so that justice is established at the end of the day. As we take our place before God, I know that our world will see more and more justice. And that alien who is a thief and a robber will not have an easy access to people again. Why don't you thank God right now that the day of change has come and that you are the person that the world is waiting for. Thank God today and appreciate God and pray and say, Father God, I yield myself as a vessel. I want to be used by you to bring change. Help me. Fill me with your spirit. Teach me your ways. Enlighten my darkness. Give me the spirit of revelation so I see your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for granting us this moment, Father. Lord, raising us so God to be judges, men and women that understand judicial power, accessing the power of judgment to free our world and generation. Thank you, Father. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus that the Spirit of God will enlighten you, that the grace of God will be multiplied to you, that you will take your place as an effective judge and through you men will be delivered. Your family will come into light and your world today will celebrate Jesus because they see light in you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. My heart is so filled with joy today because I just feel in my heart that God is doing a new work on this earth and is calling men. You don't have to be a bishop or a pastor or something, something special according to people. All you need is to be a believer who loves God enough to be an intercessor. That's all God is waiting for. Remember, he says that God saw no man. He didn't say God did not see a prophet or an evangelist. You can be that person. Take your place and you see the power of God flow through you in Jesus' name. Well, I want to pray for anyone today who you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. This is an opportunity for you. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody who is surrendering to you today. Touch them, make them your children. Pray after me right now. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm asking you to change my life. 
Forgive me, Lord, for every wrong I've done and make me your child today. I want to be a judge that can influence this world. Help me, oh God. I declare that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Wow. It's amazing that a short prayer like this meant from the heart can completely transform a man's life. Something good has begun in your life and I trust God that you will keep reigning in him. Well, uh, this Sunday in church, look at the address on your screen. I'd like you to join us because we're having such moments of glory and divine visitation. I'm going to ask you, join me this Sunday so that we can be together to celebrate Jesus. God has been visiting us in very, very unusual ways. And uh, I know that if you come around, the power of God will bring a change in your life. So look at the address on your screen and visit us this Sunday and worship with us. I'll be expecting you. If you have paid your tithes, you gave an offering, you see to support this work, I want to pray for you at this time. Dear Father, thank you for every person who has given to this work to support this assignment. I speak his blessing over your life in the name of Jesus. Oh, in this season that God is enlarging our coast, I pray for his touch in your life and business. The Lord surround you with favor. The heavens give rain to you and make you fruitful in all good works in Jesus' name. You are so blessed. Remember that you are a judge. You can stand in the courts of God and demand for justice and plead for truth and you will see justice done. God bless you. I'll see you again next week. In Jesus' name, amen.